So the first question I have for you, the, the Yahoo homepage was completely redone in 2009, is that right? Yep. So what's different about it now from what it was before? So what we basically did was take what was more or less a static page, that there wasn't a lot of interactivity onto it, mm. and we added a bunch of interactivity. So there's a lot of customization you can do. Um, you can add your favorite sites over on the left side, uh, which you couldn't do before. Mm -hmm. Um, we also have this concept of applications that are available on the home page as well, uh, which we also didn't have before. And those really give you a little bit more information about what's going on, you know, not just on the Yahoo network, but also around the internet in general. So you can check up and see what your Facebook friends are doing, uh, as well as getting a little bit more information about you know, finance and the stock market, you know, the, the sort of information that it's kind of hard to find a place for it on the page. Mm. Um, but if we could you know, put it into an area where you could get to it easily, mm -hmm. uh, then we've really, I think, increased the value of the page. We can fit more information on it, but not in a way that's really overwhelming. That sounds like a pretty big shift, right? It was a very big shift. Yeah. Uh, there was uh, definitely a lot of work that went into it, um, and, and a lot of re-architecture, too, because uh, as we are discussing earlier, we're basically moving from a page that was more or less static and pretty much the same for everybody that went to go visit it to a page that could be potentially very different uh, every time that you visit it. And then when I visit it, I might get a very different page than you did. So uh, one thing I'm curious to ask you about, what is the metric time to interactivity? What does that mean and what does it involve? So time to interactivity uh, is this thing that I, I sort of made up to uh, describe the time between when the user types you know, www.yahoo.com, hits enter, and the time at which they're able to complete an action on the page. Uh, and there are certain things that I think we know that people like to do when a page comes up, and they certainly like to do it uh, as the page is loading, and that's they see something interesting, they click on it, and they want to go away and go and do whatever that thing was. Uh, for the Yahoo homepage, sometimes that's, you know, I want to do a search. Sometimes that's, oh, that's a really interesting news article. I want to click through and read that. Mm -hmm. uh, and there are a bunch of things on the page like that. And so what we wanted to do was minimize, minimize the amount of time that it took before somebody could do that. If they decide that they want to perform one of those actions before the page is fully loaded, we should let them. We shouldn't say, well, hold on a second. Just hang around. We still have some more stuff to load. Sure. We'll get to it eventually. Like, right. We just want them to be able to go and do it. And I think that that's one of the, one of the metrics, uh, or maybe a pseudo metric, because it's a little bit hard to measure, um, that really sets apart sites that seem fast, mm. sites that seem to be responsive to their users, versus the ones that you kind of have to sit around and wait for things to happen before you can interact with it. Hmm. Uh, so are there optimization metrics that people shouldn't focus on? And by people, I mean developers, optimization people, not consumers. Well, I think that uh, you know most of the metrics that we all know right now, like how many HTTP requests you have, mm -hmm. uh, how fast the page gets painted, things like that, mm -hmm. are are all useful. What we have to be careful of is just honing in on one of them, because when you hone in on any one of them, you sort of miss the point of what's going on. Mm. You end up with, let's say, you focus on too many HTTP requests. Right? Well. If that's really not affecting the user's perception of the speed, then does it really matter if you cut it down from 30 to 20? Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know. It might, it might not, but if it's not something that seems like a problem, focusing on it would be, I think, a little bit of a waste of time. Uh, and so one of the things that I'm talking about today is you know, when we went with the previous version of the home page and there were a bunch of performance optimizations that were done there, one of the things that we found was that we couldn't do the same things on the new page because the usage paradigm was very different. Mm -hmm. uh, and you know, if you look at the waterfall chart for the new home page, you're like, wow, that's a lot of requests. You know, there, there seems like there's a lot of optimization that can be done there. I said, but ultimately, our users tell us that it doesn't seem any slower than the previous page did. So is that something that we hmm. should be overly concerned with? No. Is it something that we probably want to look at in the future? Hmm, interesting. So, last question I have for you. I read a blog post of yours where you referred to the Yahoo homepage as a application framework. And I was wondering if you could expand on that. I just found that sort of a fascinating concept for what amounts to a single page. How can a single page be an application framework? So, I think that the, the interesting part about this homepage project was you know, a lot of people think of it as a single page. 
Um, you know, you go to www.yahoo.com mm -hmm. and, and that's it. Uh, but in reality, the same uh, framework is running home pages all around the world. So we have uk.yahoo.com for uh, United Kingdom. We have fr.yahoo.com for France. So we actually built this framework that allows you to build Yahoo homepages. And in doing that, uh, was one of our goals was to unite all of the Yahoo homepages uh, around the world to get them all onto one framework. And the, the interesting thing there is we had to kind of teach people that there's a difference between building an application and building an application framework. Because an application looks the same way, acts the same way. There's a lot of similarities. Um, but you know, the news that's relevant to us in the United States might not be relevant to the users in Korea. Mm -hmm. uh, and likewise, you know, some of the user interface paradigms might be a little bit different in other places than they are in the United States. And so what we basically had to do was build up the page in such a way that it was configurable. So uh, any place that it had to be set up, we could set it up the way that it needed to be there and not necessarily just say, oh, well, it's one application, so we're just going to you know, change the background color, and that's all the customization mm -hmm. that we can do. Interesting. Great. Well, thank you very much for being with us. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Excellent.